Does America really have a secret blacklisting program? Yes, they do. I can tell you for sure. Because I myself experienced it, and I've talked with literally thousands of people who have gone through this experience. So targeting or blacklisting is a program that is run by the United States government, or shall I say, the deep state, as we like to call it, a secret shadow organization. But do not mistake that they are some sort of small, rogue faction. No, it is the ruling, completely in control, unified government that runs this targeting program, which what happens is, for various reasons, a person will get blacklisted. And once this happens, you are forever on that list until the day you die, then you are not on the list. So I learned this through personal experience starting in 2013 when I uploaded material to social media that apparently put me on this blacklist. And since then, as I said, I have run into so many people that tell the same story and have talked personally with me about all these things to the point where I now understand fairly well what's happening. And of course, thousands and thousands of people have made videos about this. So understand that in order to really understand what I'm saying, if you've never heard of this before, the only way you are going to really get anything out of this presentation is to unhinge your mind a bit from the reality that you currently know. Because that is all I could say to someone who was like me before this happened to me, wherein if I had heard what I'm about to describe, I would at least halfway think that the person had lost a little bit of their sanity. Maybe not fully insane, but just gotten a little bit fuzzy around the edges. Happens to people all the time, young or old, but we know more commonly as people grow older, they get a little bit fuzzy around the edges with their reality. And of course, we know there's plenty of people that never had a sense of reality. But what I can tell you is that I have evidence to back this up. You can check this out at my social media sites. I have them on YouTube, BitChute, Rumble, and Brighteon. Uh, this I had several media accounts on different platforms due to the rampant censorship, which you may have heard about. Now, before I get to why I was blacklisted, I want to get into the details of what I learned from being blacklisted, and I'll get to why I was momentarily. However, I first want to describe the situation so that you can start to get a picture of what I'm saying. And one way it might help to even hear what I'm saying instead of just blocking down the firewall of your mind, which is likely to happen when you hear something that goes against what your current understanding of reality is, is to describe the situation as a opening up your mind to a reality that is less happy than the current reality that you have because that is what happened to me and no one wants to have their world turned into a dark or darker world than they currently thought it was now I know if you're watching this video it's not because you're not somewhat curious about truth and anybody who's gonna watch for any length of time and and get out of this what I present here is going to be someone who is at least partially interested in, partially open-minded to something that is unbelievable. And it is unbelievable. I couldn't even, when this happened to me, starting in early 2013, when I uploaded that material to social media, I, I couldn't believe it. It took me 60 days. So I upload this stuff to social media, to my YouTube account. And I just, I really didn't have much that I uploaded to my YouTube channel, but I found this topic and I, so I uploaded this and I didn't think 
too much of it at the time until I get helicopters buzzing my place like there's a big raid of some kind or you know somebody getting busted for drugs or something and you know I'm looking oh boy maybe there's a, it's right here in the building because I had an apartment in Woodland Hills and I'm like whoa what is this and as the day wore on and they kept it, it's almost like the noise that's done with these helicopters is designed to freak you out because it like starts low and then it goes and gets louder louder and then it goes over your house with with noise and vibration and you're like oh, oh, all right <laughs> you know you're kind of you know like whoa what is this but towards the end of the day this kept happening okay i'm on the top floor of this three-story building in woodland hills and Towards the end of the day, it begins to just this sinking feeling like, oh my God, like, no, this this can't be because what I uploaded to social media, I just, you know, I, come on, right? You think I'm nuts for saying, I know, I, I couldn't, I'm like, no, nah, come, on, come on, come on. But then it happened the next day and the next day. And when I went for a walk down the street to get something at the store, I noticed black SUVs following and stuff, but at first, even when I saw it, I, I, I just, it didn't register. But then I, I began to think about it, whoa, and then as it happened more and more, as I'm like, holy crap. I mean, is this, is this a movie? This is a movie, I'm dreaming, this can't, no, come on. So, in any case, in the following days, weeks, and months, I learned for sure it was real. And, you know, I'm, I'm making light of it in a way, but I mean, you know, I was at first, I mean, I was scared. I thought, you know, what, what was going to happen? Because I started getting police cars lighting up their sirens behind me and zooming around. I thought they were going to pull me over. They didn't. They didn't. They would like zoom around me like they would pull over somebody right next to me. It would happen so much. I decided to buy a dash camera and, and get it on film. And I, and I did. But when I did that, that form of stalking stopped because it was so obvious right in your face. I mean, it was, you know, I could, if, if I had kept that up, I mean, I could have, you know, I definitely could have gone to a lawyer and sued, but what they did was they kept up what's called air stalking, okay? So what this is, it's a, it's a too weird to believe it's true psychological warfare campaign. You say, well, okay, great. Rich, I mean, what's, you know, what, what, are you, what are you talking about here? Why would they do this? I mean, can't they just throw you in jail? Apparently not. Apparently not in all cases. I mean, I think in some cases they can if you have priors. I didn't have any priors. That's the thing. So I, you know, I led a pretty boring life working as a secretary in a medical office, and I was an artist as my hobby. And I did, you know, as a Christian, I wrote up little pamphlets, you know, that I was delivering, you know, just to various places. But, you know, nothing... On a, on a grand scale until I uploaded this stuff to my social media account which whoa then I started attracting an audience but the, the audience that I attracted was just beyond belief so what I'm telling you is that this is real it happened to me I challenge anybody with an open mind to to talk with me if you think I'm nuts or look at my uploads to my social media accounts, primarily YouTube. I don't know, the censorship is so bad, I don't know when they might delete my channel. So I have alternate sites on BitChute, Rumble, and Brighteon. So of course, when this happens to you, you investigate. You know, I bought a video camera and I started, you know, recording the, the helicopters. I started, you know, you can see from my social media, Richard Bruce on YouTube, you can see that uh, I started recording it and then I started investigating and I found out what's, you know, what seems to be the story. Now, I had actually heard of it just peripherally. I didn't really pay much attention to it as I was like watching UFO videos. I was always interested in UFOs and, you know, the whole mystery behind that. And, and I, I had concluded long before any of this that the government was behind it. Not only that, but there was something very weird about the government covering it up because why would they hide extraterrestrials, the most important discovery man could ever make, practically, from the general population. Why would the government hide that from the people? I mean, why, why wouldn't they, and, and why wouldn't enough people in government 
and media speak out and say, hey, this is this is really going on. We're getting, you know, apparently, you know, technology craft that's way beyond what we have. And it looks like it's from other planets here. So through this investigation, I found out that there are many types of targeting tools that the blacklisters use, the deep state. I'll just call them the deep state for now. And some of those tools are directed energy weapons of various kinds, uh, things that you just couldn't believe. There's actually been some stuff in the news you may have heard about an embassy where some people complained of being sick and then they found out it was some sort of directed energy weapon or some kind of microwave weapon that was hitting these people. Well, it turns out they have, and they have had for a long time, a wide variety of things that can cause anything from burning skin. You can see the pictures of these people. You're not going to, of course, see it on any sort of mainstream news because all of that is under control. But people that get burns on their skin, on their bodies, and uh, they hear ringing. Um, there's, they can cause mood swings. There was some guy in Japan talking about how they were controlling his bowel movements to do everything from make a hard stool to a loose stool and everything in between and all kinds of torments, people with headaches and all kinds of stuff that they attribute to being targeted and or these directed energy weapons of various kinds. And so there's that. And then there's what they call street theater. So some people, uh, it was featured on a now algorithmically isolated, but got 3 million views movie on Vice, the Vice channel on YouTube. And uh, it's called uh, The Nightmare World of Gang Stalking, in which two reporters came over from New York and shot with me for a couple of days. And it was uh, very interesting, but one of the things that I'm getting to here is that there was somebody in that feature who said that they had vehicles driving around them on the freeway and like they would all be the same color or something and then they would be boxing a man and then other things where he'd be walking on the street and then just all these people would be like walking around and he knew that they were in on it and it's like they're they either have a key phrase or they do something or they say something that is derogatory or addresses something about that person's life to try to drive them crazy. So this is known as street theater. So a lot of people get this. And I was fortunate in several respects. Uh, I didn't get the burning. I didn't get, I got other types of directed energy weapons hitting me. Like I'd get these headaches and dizziness. You know, that was one of the main things that I got. And who knows what else. Um, but, you know, because I have some other symptoms, but you, you know, you don't want to be paranoid about it and assume that everything is this. People do have health problems that are obviously not having to do with some dark government blacklisting program. But there are a lot of things that we, that are out there and, you know, it's, you have to make a decision about what's what. But in any case, there's a variety of things that can get you. And you say, well, this is all kind of strange. I mean, how come they can't just kill you? You know, why not, you know, why, why, why do this? Why do these little petty tactics to try to, to cause that's one of the things you, the questions you ask is, wait a minute, they're, they're so powerful. They're the government. I mean, do, how come they can't just, you know, cart you off to jail or do, do whatever? Cause I, that's what one of the big mysteries, but so that was one of the things I was lucky. I didn't get the street theater. I didn't get the burning. I didn't get the street theater, but I got the helicopters, like what they call air stalking. So uh, another thing too, this is really wild and this is going to strain your belief. Here we go. Straining your belief. Turns out uh, the government has had, and you can see this actually on the Simpsons. They parody this as it's amazing. That cartoon, that comedy cartoon on television called the Simpsons actually shows uh, this um, holographic aircraft. So they show a helicopter, like, you know, supposedly buzzing somebody, and then in the cartoon they show it disappearing. Well, I found out through a gentleman named John Lear, who was uh, an ex-Air uh, Force and uh, space program NASA uh, flight tester. So he would test aircraft and, and so forth. But he says he found out through his investigation that the government has technology of holograms of aircraft wherein 
you with noise and vibration and everything that goes with it where you cannot tell the difference. You just literally cannot tell the difference between one that's real right beside it and the hologram. And I found out that this was true firsthand because what they would do is I, I couldn't believe it, that they would keep up this air stalking to the point. You know, it's, to, it's to try to intimidate you and drive you crazy, get you to stop whatever it is you're doing. And or I found out it's basically forever. So even if you stop doing what it is they want you to stop doing, they'll continue it forever. Although they didn't send me a manual or a message this whole time. They never, they didn't arrest me. They never sent me a message. I did have, apparently, it might have been a, a plant, but apparently a whistleblower who was on the program, who was working on it, and was, apparently, he, according to him, he was at the last part of his life, he sent me an email, and he said he wanted to confess to me that he was in on it, he was part of it, and that, um, you know, he explained some things to me about it, you know, and various, various things, but I didn't know if that was real or not. In any case, they, they do have this, this, program of all these little things tiny things that you just it just it's, a, it's too weird why why would they do it well they do do it they know that repetitive things work those little things it just seemed like for instance a guy to talk with me several people have have actually told me <clears throat> that they've had a thing where people say a key phrase Okay, one was balls, another one was fuck nigger. Sorry for my French there, but that's what this one other guy told me. And what they would do is, is, is and, and he, said, he said, everywhere you go, even even across state lines, you know, somebody could come up to him and say, hey, fuck nigger, you know, and, and, or, you know, hey, balls, you know, and everywhere they would go. And you say, well, Okay, they, they, they must have a vast and powerful network. Yes, they do. But it's more than that, as I'll get to. Another thing I was fortunate about was that I knew right away not to go to the police, because a lot of people go to the police and they have a whole program set up because this is another thing that's gonna strain the credibility here, okay? I know, it sounds like paranoia, sounds like it's not true. I had police in my family, okay? So I'm not anti-police here, all right? And I'm not, I never was anti-police, I never was for defund the police. What are you gonna do, defund the police? It's ridiculous. But uh, apparently they're in control of all law enforcement across the country and worldwide, I believe. It's actually worldwide, it's not just America, it's worldwide, they have worldwide control, okay? You say, well, you know, come on, this is, you're talking about a conspiracy that's too big to be true. I thought it was too big to be true. I heard other people saying things along those unbelievable lines, and I did not believe them. They were very credible people, but I did not believe them. Well, it turns out these unbelievable things are true. Just open up your mind to that possibility. Don't close it, otherwise you're not going to, you just, you know, a lot of times when you hear somebody and you think they're wrong, you just, that's it. <clears throat> The gate comes down and they are a, a nut job, a whack job. Give me a chance here to at least get you to entertain the idea that that which we think is impossible is possible and it's going on. And it's exactly because we think it's impossible that it remains hidden. So because in my case they were using police vehicles to target me, I just reasoned that they are in control of the whole situation because I was publishing this on social media and I know that, you know, if they're, if the FBI and the CIA and any, any of those people are doing their jobs, they're watching social media for lunatics saying, yeah, I bought a bunch of guns and now I'm going to go out and kill somebody. So they, they, they're watching you see, to see. And in fact, it, it turns out it looks, it looks even, even bigger than that, that social media is actually created as an observation tool. And it was initially created for that, even though people think it was just, you know, a couple of guys start up in tech and everything. Oh, it's a great idea. Uh, but it, it, it turns out that actually it, a lot of this stuff like Facebook, there's evidence that Facebook was started that. Maybe YouTube wasn't started by that, but then it was bought up by Google. And then it certainly became that as a lot of us who started digging into the truth found out. The powers that shouldn't be, as the great Mr. James Corbett, a documentarian who was banned from YouTube, a great tragedy that he was banned because this guy was more PG rated than I am and he wasn't even a Christian but he did excellent documentaries and he got banned 
and for what? For telling the truth, okay? Especially as the pandemic came up and he started talking about that and maybe he was warned, I don't know, but he decided to push through and all of his work. I mean, a, a great body of work. I mean, great presentations. I mean, just, I can't even believe that this one guy did it from Japan, but he did. And he's, and he's gone now, and a lot, along with a lot of other great people. So that's another aspect of this, which is that they don't want you to know this. And this is, gets to even another weirder thing, which is that if they can delete all those people, why don't they delete everyone, especially someone like me who's basically isolated, and they're not going to, you know, no one's going to, you know, there, there's going to be a federal investigation if they shut my YouTube channel, channel down, which they obviously don't, want me to, to publish, but apparently it looks to me like there's some kind of rules that they have to follow, which means that these people with this evil intent are not the ultimate ones in charge. And because otherwise, why wouldn't they kill me? And as a matter of fact, that gets to another even weirder thing about this, which is that I will witness, I have no proof of this, but I will witness to you that they tried to kill me three times. In two of the attempts on my life trying to kill me, the would-be assassins were themselves killed. And once again, other people can say, you know, other people who have heard me say this, especially in the targeted indiv individual community, believe that I am off my rocker. What I can say is that there are ways of finding out things and knowing things which are not credible in terms of by way of proof, but nonetheless you know them and yes some of that has to do with faith but there is triangulating corroborating evidence by which you can determine that those messages that you might receive about certain things which are hidden from most are in fact the truth so when when this happens a lot of people obviously you know they're like whoa there's some kind of gang or something after me oh my god I could go to the police okay well, as I said, they control the police and they have a whole thing set up. It's all very organized. They control society, friends, is what I'm trying to tell you. If you're a fellow American and you, you're hearing about this or you're investigating, targeting or whatever, and it just sounds, you know, it just sounds like lunacy, I understand. It, I, until this happened to me, I just, until something dark really hits your life and you just go, whoa, you know, like that one scene from The Vampire, I think it was called The Night Flyer. And he sees it. He sees him for the first time. He's like, ah! <laughs> you know, it, it, it's like that. I mean, it, it, except it's reality. You know, I mean, I can remember telling my stepbrother at a family meeting one time. You know, I started to, to talk with him about it. I, I could see the, the, the moment when he realized I wasn't telling a science fiction. So, you know, I could tell like a little bit as I'm talking. He's thinking I'm talking about some movie episode. But when it begins, to, he, he realized that I was trying to tell him the reality. I could just see the, uh, you know, the. Uh, ain't gonna ain't gonna listen or it's not it's not gonna register so uh, a lot of the stuff something really dark has to hit you in the face you know like the song says some things you gotta feel to be real or see to be real firsthand experiencing it firsthand so I just like to say that as a, a point of sanity because the whole point of making these videos is to bridge the gap between people who haven't experienced this and those who have and try to con to try to get the news out about this but then again people who haven't broken away from the happy-go-lucky world where oh our government is good and our police are righteous and uh, you know in general of course there's some corruption but in general this they're good people in control of everything you know they don't want to hear from someone like me i'm the the dark jerk that they don't want to hear their paranoid conspiracy theories about because that clouds their happy life and until you have a reason to cloud your happy life you don't want to hear from someone like that just to clarify what they do if you go to police they say okay so you say yeah there's people following me or something like that. okay we need to submit you for a psychological evaluation you go for the psychological evaluation, you tell them what really happened to you, they label you as schizophrenic, and depending on this or that, they may actually recommend to commit you to a 
mental institution where they give you drugs and those drugs fry your brain. I know this because there was the guy who actually was the key guy who got me into the information because he had uploaded some of this information before I did and then this and that happened to him and then his parents decided that he went to police and complained and then they said well they had to submit him for a psych evaluation blah 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 so then they committed him to this thing and he was gone for three and a half years and when he came back he unfortunately had basically lost his mind at least as far as I can tell and what a lot of other people also confirmed and it's really unfortunate and I don't mean to uh, denigrate this fellow because I think that um, his initial work was fantastic and then uh, I think that after they had institutionalized him uh, they did something and it really did a number on him so uh, and this happens to a lot of people I think and maybe even some of these people never come out of these mental institutions because maybe the drugs cause them to go crazy and then they they said oh we really can't let them out and then that's how they get rid of you and you say well that, that sounds like a paranoid conspiracy theory, theory. I know I know uh, but what I'm telling you is um, this is real. Um, this is this is how they, they 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 have a whole plan set up to catch you. So, but I, I I was lucky in that since because I had police vehicles harassing me, doing this stalking, I just knew, you know, I, I could just sense that going to the police wasn't going to help me, and I, I sure as heck was right. So. That's uh, That was another thing that I was lucky about, and uh, once again, I don't expect you to believe this right away, but what I'm telling you is is that apparently, and this is this targeting and the thing with law enforcement under control is na worldwide. It's in every, you know, the only place where it isn't is in, you know, some, you know, s smaller, you know, you know, maybe jungle type community or something like that, you know, where they don't have modernity. But besides that, I believe it's all under control and it's a centralized control so it's not like you know different fighting factions like a lot of people think of course there's infighting among any groups but as far as the control goes the world control blacklisting targeting gang stalking program it's centralized it's worldwide it's standardized and short of a world power revolution which is not going to happen too easily there won't be any stop to it so once all this happened to me okay and it continues to this day and so I'm targeted and I realize that everything is not quite what it seems you know law enforcement the government it's all very dark and weird and scary and when I realized this, I realized that I, I, I had the ability to look into other things that I just had heard peripherally, but I hadn't give much, given much thought to and sound like crazy conspiracy theories. I just like anybody else. When you hear this, some of this dark, crazy sounding stuff, you're just like, yeah, this is, you know, dark conspiracy stuff. I mean, who knows? Maybe it's true, but you just, you, you really don't look into it like I said unless you have a real reason to so I did I started looking into a few of these things and here's just a sampling of some of the dark things that I learned now that I was prepared to see the darkness so I'll start with one of the first things which is the medical industry and medicine in general uh, it's it's all under control, the same as the police, and unfortunately, what I found out was it's not for our good. In fact, it's so dark and weird and scary that, once again, it's just beyond belief. But So my mother, being a medical doctor and having an interest in autism, because my niece was autistic, my sister's daughter, uh, and she looked into this and she told me at one point that she felt that the AMA, the American Medical Association, and the CDC were uh, corrupt and lying. And I said, well, why is that? And she said, well, because I've looked into the 
treatments for various diseases. I'm not going to be specific because that information tends to get censored on YouTube, so I'm just going to keep it general. Um, but various, you know, well-established preventative treatments for diseases were in fact causing harm. Now my mother was highly competent and honest to a fault. I mean, I had no doubts about her integrity or competence, but in this case I just, I couldn't believe it because I said, you know, Mom, I just saw a, a study on this major news outlet with a control group study of 300 people and they tested these preventative medicinal things that they give to children and they found that it was perfectly safe and so I'm sorry mom but if it's between believing you and believing something that's on a major news network that you know if, I mean if, they, if it was fake they would be found out right okay so let me just once again break the barrier of what you may be able to believe because what I found out was that they can do these huge, outrageous lies that you just, I just couldn't believe it. And yet somehow, very few people realize the truth. The majority go on thinking that this is an honest news organization telling you the truth about a scientific study that they did testing the safety of a medical procedure, preventative medicine. And you just can't believe it. You can't believe it that they could, they could knowingly to everyone's face tell a huge outrageous lie to protect what? Some sort of financial interest? It doesn't make sense because it's, they would be criminally liable. Well, what I'm here to tell you is that, um, yes, they do. They put it in everyone's face and it's so unbelievable that that's exactly why people don't believe it. But it's true. And to say something extreme, like somehow somebody who wants to kill us is in control of the entire American medical apparatus as we understand it, is not going too far. It's not some sort of insane, deeply dark and negative, oh, you're being so negative, negative statement, okay? Check it out for yourself. Because actually, all it takes is looking at the facts with an open mind. You don't have to dig very hard. You don't have to contact some sort of secret group or get some secret film or something. It's actually right there. It's just whoever's doing this, whatever force is behind this, it's like they're confident in knowing that most people can't even begin to think something this dark, this evil is the only word for it, could, could possibly be true. And it doesn't make sense from, from many different angles. Why would mothers with their own children want to do this? Why would a human being want to do this, is the, is the question you ask. It's, it doesn't make sense. So not just the medical system, but actually also the education system. You say, well, what's the evil they're doing there? They're teaching people false and wrong things deliberately, and the occupations that you will be allowed to make money in this world with are actually corruptions, crimes which denigrate your soul. They know that it's evil, they know that it's corrupt, but you have no choice. You got your degree in that field and if you don't conform to those parameters, you will be out of business, you will not be able to make money, okay? Money is the key to the whole thing, that's how it's all controlled. Anyone who finds out any of this and who resists, their money will be cut off. If you see somebody who still has plenty of money, well, I wouldn't trust what they're saying. In fact, I found out later that what they do is 
in the education system, it's actually designed to make you stupid, that your thinking is, is closed and limited and you, you have to think in this little box. They don't, they don't want, want your mind to be expanded. This is all done. It sounds like, a, like it's too big of a conspiracy to possibly be true. There's all these different organizations and people in charge of it with different histories and blah, blah, blah. How can they, you know, how could it all be organized? It is. And one of the key telling points of it is that most major colleges have a secret society organization of some kind, which they call, you know, some sort of cool fraternity college thing. But in fact, if you dig deeper, these secret society clubs are actually places to groom young leaders who will go along with the evil and keep their mouths shut. Okay, it's similar to the Freemasons, okay? The whole point of being a Freemason is that one of the main oaths that you take is to keep your mouth shut no matter what about their activities and things that they do. Because it's it's that whole thing where you build up to, you know, a 33 degree Freemason, whatever. The degrees that you that you go are are initiations. And at first, of course, you know, it's, it's designed to, effort to, to not shy people away because they're not going to show the, the people the evil right away. But they get you up to a certain level, training you, apparently, young leaders, to be leaders of the society that we now have, a, a world of wicked entrapment, okay? And anybody who really stands up for good will be isolated, cut off, demonized, and definanced. In the book by William Tompkins called Selected by Extraterrestrials, he describes that when he was recruited as a young man still in grade school, he found out later that that's what they do. They recruit people before they enter into the college system because they know that that college system is actually designed to stupefy the mind. They don't want people thinking out of the box. They don't want people who can when presented with evidence, actually accept what they're seeing. They want people with the horse blinders on, okay? I know that sounds too crazy to be true, but it is. That's actually designed to make you close-minded and not thinking outside of the parameters of your allowed occupation for money. But if you stay in it, if you stay in the system, if you're approved, if you're not a rebel fighting on the edges, an outcast, I say the results will be much, much worse. In addition to the medical and scholastic system being designed to weaken and destroy humanity, apparently, also the food industry is a little bit more of an obvious example. And yet you could say, well, people just go with what sells and that's why they don't necessarily sell the healthiest food but it turns out they know and it's been known for a long time but they keep it hidden from general knowledge basically if you eat the food that is generally offered you will be obese diabetic cancerous heart diseased etc etc designed specifically to make humans weak, sick, dying, dependent on the medical system, which once you get the so-called medicine for whatever illness you have, that medicine actually makes it 10 times worse and kills you quicker. Yes, it sounds crazy, but if you look into it with an open mind, that there could be some sort of fantastic evil force in control of it all and you just look at some of the basic facts it's right there but once again they know that very few people will choose the truth so aside from the also the food industry by the way sugar in case you didn't know it's basically poison and what you'll find when you go to any sort of like for instance uh, Starbucks everything that's in there it's either sugary or salty and fatty and generally not that good for you unless it's something pure like fruit and then the fruit might be, guess what, 
gen genetically modified or GMOs, and it turns out that is a severe cause of cancer, which is why you know that information is actually leaked out to the public, where most people are beginning to wake up and realize that you got to buy non-GMO foods. Is why you're seeing the the trend for people buying GMO foods because that's been so in your face. And yet, even with that, the rest of everything else isn't suspect. For instance, the treatment for cancer, chemotherapy, is actually designed to, to that they give you the cancer for, from various things, and then they finish you off with the chemo. And my mother was offered, before she died of cancer in 2013, she was offered a alternative chemo. Well, that killed her like that, and she died. And I warned her, don't get the chemo. but. She decided to take it. As I mentioned, censorship of social media, people's Twitter and YouTube accounts, is one of the main problems that we have in terms of getting the truth out. And you can see that it's a control mechanism. And the other main control mechanism, of course, is the mainstream media, as I mentioned. But I want to mention it again just to emphasize that everything that we see on any thing that's on television as far as news is actually controlled lies and propaganda not for profit because people have bought them out not because some rogue agency like the FBI or CIA or something has threatened a certain news organization or news organizations that they might do something if they let slip a certain truth nah. You need to understand that it's actually a complete, under control operation worldwide of media, complete and utter control to where, and, and also it's, it's lies and propaganda. It's not goodness coming out of the tube at your face. It's evil is what I found out. It's, it's, it's beyond evil. And to my embarrassment, I love TV. I used to be such a fan of TV. I asked for one of my relatives to lend me a little money so I could at least buy a small RV, to, a small TV to put in my RV. And um, I mean, I used to watch the nightly news with Jim Lehrer or NBC with Brian Williams or whatever used to be Tom Brokaw and uh, I mean I loved the um, the the TV I mean I I watched it I was an avid fan but I found out that it's not just lies and propaganda or maybe some things are untrue it's it's almost like it's designed to pour evil out in your face so that you are brainwashed and and brain dead and asleep so that you don't wake up to what's happening because if you can even stand their lying narrative then you will naturally be against any voice that speaks the truth and you will believe their lies their stories that even the the television shows the movies the things are designed to vilify the truth and those speaking the truth and and then popularize and make cool the people who are the liars and who are propagating the lie it's like a, a complete inversion of truth an inversion of that which is good but with a facade of goodness to it and I got a message which was two parking tickets in a row like right in the same day like within an hour as I was about to in another episode buy a TV for myself and I realized because I read the scripture and it says that when something goes wrong for you consider if it is a it, a message about something and when I considered it you know I thought oh this is a message about getting the TV and so I I took that as a message and I decided not to and I haven't been watching TV now for I don't know how long it's been close to 10 years um, and I can tell you that now from a from the perspective of not having watched it and then now and again seeing it somewhere like in a 
somewhere, maybe at someone's house or something like I just, or maybe catch a piece of it on the on the internet too. It's, it just, it's so dark. Oh my goodness, it is so dark, so evil. I I would just, I would say to anyone, look, I know I used to love TV, man. I was a TV addict, man. I loved TV. I grew up with TV. I loved it. It was like the main window to something cool in this world that was free basically right just have an antenna but I can tell you that now I know that this force of evil that I'm talking about here has complete control there is nothing that can be on television that is actually something good and wholesome that you want I don't care what show it is it's, it seems impossible, I know. There are things that look so, so good. Like, for instance, I don't, I don't know, and I couldn't point to, for instance, what would be wrong with the movie The Passion of the Christ. I thought it was a great movie. But that things like that could might be used, if, if there's nothing evil about that, can be used to prop up other things, the rest of it, or a lot of it, that's basically spewing out it's not just evil messages so that you're brainwashed I found out it's like it's an evil energy coming out and that energy affects your mind affects your thinking affects who you are when you view it and now I've got to the point now where I can actually tune myself if I if I watch a movie I can actually observe certain things that give me a, a a propensity to do something that is less than what I would want to do for myself as far as sin goes. And so uh, I can only say that I, I believe that television is and, and, the, and the news media, which is all just lies and propaganda, there's not a single one, just to be absolutely clear, there is not a single mainstream news media outlet that is not under this profound, unbelievable control and, and just spewing out lies, propaganda, and evil energy at your face and into the face of your children and your family. Me, I, I recommend not watching it at all unless you're actually doing some kind of documentary on the evil of it. Uh, there are some people like Mark Dice who he says, you know, he, he watches these evil news programs so we don't have to. And that's great. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. He does, he does a good, very good job. But uh, in general, for, for the rest of us, I would say if you're not doing that, um, it's best to, because uh, I, a man in Germany contacted me and because uh, I had mentioned something about this a while back and he contacted me and he told me that his situation was he heard this weird high-pitched noise and he couldn't figure out what's coming from he looked around he looked around and so then he figured out it was coming from the television so he turned off the television but he could still hear it then he unplugged the television and then it stopped so yeah um, I don't know but from other things that I have seen they also control this evil force that's in control of the world, as I mentioned. Controls all electronics and things like that, all manufacturing. That um, I mean, certainly on any larger scale, anything electronic, they they can control it, and like computers or anything like that. And so it's all backdoored. You know, we we hear now that the the processors are backdoored so that they can spy on you. They know, you notice how, you know, you don't need to log into Amazon or YouTube or anything like that. They know exactly who you are when you're, when you click on their site, they know exactly who you are. And that brings me to another thing, which is that Google, YouTube, and Amazon, you know, things like Amazon, all that, they've got the, the real government, which is completely hidden um, and is people that you've probably never seen or heard of. Um, they basically have a system if you're in any sort of modern society with the internet especially they know exactly who you are with a complete profile as I understand it 
of your intelligence level, your family, your habits, your the products that you like, what you what you've done, where you've been, everything. I mean, just like a, a complete psychological profile on you. And apparently, now that I have experienced being targeted myself, it's if someone turns out to be an enemy of their control world program, then they attack you, they minimize you, so they, so they use everything. Everything from psychological warfare, directed energy weapons, street theater, you name it. And so what they do also, one of the main things is once you've been identified as an enemy of the state, you know that movie Enemy of the State with Will Smith or whatever, um, it's like that, you know, you're an enemy everywhere you go. It doesn't matter where in the world you go, you you are known. I knew this because plenty of people and plenty of stories. People try to cross state lines. They try to go to another country. It follows you wherever you go. You think, no, 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 it's paranoid conspiracy. No, no, it's true. If you're getting, if if I was getting this targeting here, air target, By the way, they they pick they pick one thing and then they keep hammering you with it because they know that's what'll drive you crazy over time. If they don't get you in 50 year in 15 years, they'll get you in 30. They figure. And by the way that that repetitive thing to drive you crazy can also build up anger okay and so you just get angry and angry over this and they know that finally that one day will come when you'll explode and haul off and hit somebody boom then they can drag you to jail you're minimized out of out of commission they got it under control boom baby they got you they're hoping you break the law they're hoping you buy a gun they're hoping you shoot somebody they're hoping you break the law somehow, some way, so that they can throw you in jail and give them legality to take you out. But if you stay lawful and fight the good fight, I believe that you can at least stay in it for longer, if not forever. And of course, this talk wouldn't be complete without talking about the government and how corrupt that is. For a good taste of that, you should read Kathy O'Brien's book, Trance-Formation of America trance as in hypnotic trance trance dash formation of america the shock of reading this book it's a small book but they charge you 30 bucks for it but if you want to know the truth read it it's so shocking that i i, I shudder to recommend this to people because it's it's I don't want them to think you know I I'm saying this is a great book now it, it, what it is is we've been trained all our lives to look up to our government I mean the American government yeah you know come on I mean yeah there's sort of some things that are wrong but you know as you as you as you grow up as a kid you know you think that you know the governments are our heroes you know our leaders you know the you know, we can count on the good old U.S. of A. and our Constitution and the good people who fought for our country and all these wars. And yeah, we've had some evil stuff, you know, slavery and civil war and all that stuff going on. But, you know, and of course, there's always something something wrong. But in general, you can, you know, America's the good guys. Okay. That was one of the big things that was the big revelation for me once I realized about all this. They're literally satanic. Pedophiles of the most disgusting order you can imagine. Um, murderers, drug dealers. It's all true. It seems, it seems like it can't be true. Like somehow, no, no, wait, some people would find out about it. They have, but not that many. And that brings me to another important point about this, which is that what I realize about this is that all of this couldn't exist without our participation in some way. And I'm talking about myself here. If I wasn't wanting to go along with it in some deep part of myself, wanting to not see the truth, it couldn't exist. Again, it, you know, you could say, you could blame it. Well, you know, most people just don't know. It's true. Most people don't know. But 
life led me into finding out. I sensed something very dark at one point in my life, which is why I started looking into this stuff. And that's when I discovered it. But even then, I think a lot of people see dark things and they do not look into what's causing it. As an example, Dick Cheney, the former vice president to George W. Bush, was at one point raping Kathy O'Brien's daughter with a cattle prod, shocking her and torturing her multiple times. And Kathy O'Brien said that she was what they call a presidential model, these sex slaves that they get for these various high-end leadership perks. But of course, it's so evil you can't imagine. And the Clintons are involved with murder, drug dealing, and it's, they're not the only ones. It's like they're all in on it. In fact, it appears that this thing with extreme sexual immorality is like a hallmark of the elites, these people that are at the top of this evil food chain. And one of those evil things is the pedophilia, which is a big mystery to a lot of people, like a friend of mine was saying. He says, Richard, I can understand a little girl, but why a little boy? I don't get it. That's because it's not about sex, it's about energy. What's happening is, this is another main component of this that I guess now is as good a time as any to get into. The Romans 7, 18, I have no good thing dwelling within me, the Apostle Paul said. For I am able and ready to do that which is evil, but how to do good, I don't know how. And this is really interesting because he also had the Holy Ghost to know Jesus Christ as Lord. And yet here he is saying that he has no good thing dwelling in his body. And he says he's ready and able and equipped to do evil. And yet to do good somehow he doesn't, doesn't know what he's doing. It's, it's like some sort of extra effort he has to learn somehow. And this gets to a really important thing because the, the reason for pedophilia, it's not because people are just really horny and weird. That's what you think at first. They're like, they're just weird. And they just want to do some weird, crazy thing. Like, oh boy, the next level of, of weirdness. Mmm, kids, you know. And it seems insane. Like, why do politicians and all these affluent people, they, they, they risk their entire career, their, their esteem among men to do this utterly foolish and dastardly deed of exploiting children for sex? What, what is the point of that? Well, I found out what's happening is these people are controlled by evil spirits that each has its own intelligence. They have a brain, they have everything, and they dwell in all of us. It's universal. That's what Romans 7:18 of the Bible tells us. They're, everyone has them dwelling inside of us. And they, it's, they're intelligent. They're not just beasts because I've actually seen them on video. You can see them if you know what you're doing. You can catch glimpses of their features, and it's horrific. You say, well, but what, how can this be? How can something be living in your body besides your soul, besides you, besides your spirit? Well, what we understand is that it's the body, this flesh, that contains them by default. We're born in sin, and that's part of what it means to be born in sin is that we have these multiple evil spirits that are controlling us from within. Our thoughts are not our own. Our feelings are not just because of some external thing or your opinion or whatever. No, they can actually be caused by these intelligent language and technology using beings that dwell inside our bodies. As I mentioned, I understand that they have holographic technology where you cannot tell the difference. 
And one of the ways that I knew that they had this was because they would time right when I would come home so that a helicopter would start passing overhead as I came to my house. And it was direct psychological warfare to try to, this, this repetitive thing to try to get you to be angry. But how I was able to determine that it was holographic technology was that it didn't make sense that they would spend that kind of money to coordinate it for a helicopter to pass overhead right as I came home to my door. So it made a lot more sense. In fact, it, it's, it was the only explanation. That's why I was able to confirm that they have this holographic technology is because they can't time it for right when you come to your door unless they're using something else besides real helicopters because that would just be too expensive. Plus I knew that they had this mind reading technology because they would roll out one of these holograms upon certain thoughts. So the helicopter holograms would buzz me upon certain thoughts, especially like thoughts of anger or even like a thought of violence. They would buzz me and it's almost like they're policing. You know, that's, that's, that's their narrative. So as I said, they're waiting for you to mess up. So, because they they're try they try to push you over the edge, and then if you fall for it, if you do it, that's when they can take care of you, put you away. Now it's worth mentioning that although this is a little bit outlandish and off topic, it's relevant that they have invisibility and time travel technology. This is confirmed. It seems like science fiction. No, it's not they have it. Invisibility and time travel. They call quantum access time travel. See Andrew Basago. So it's basically a situation where humans have been kept in the dark about what is really the state of technology. And another thing that's worth mentioning too is the chemtrails, which you may think that those white streaks that you see coming out the back of jets are just the exhaust or condensation on cold days. No. What they're doing is they're actually spraying population centers, especially high technology developing areas, to enact mind control. It's another form of mind control. So it's mind control gas, but that's not the only thing. There's all kinds of other things. There's other words that they call it. Uh, geoengineering, climate control, etc. And they they admit to some of it. But you can see the pictures of the gas canisters in the back of these aircraft and it's horrific. It's been documented that they're actually spraying aluminum, uh, aluminum particulates which is poisonous uh, apparently to try to do something with the climate. Who knows what they're saying it is. It's all lies. You can't, you know, obviously trust uh, any of these uh, people because they're basically in on total destruction, total evil. Uh, they don't care. It's just a, a matter of them doing exactly what they want and nobody can really understand what they're doing because this evil force controlling everything has control over everything, control over all information, even mind control as I was mentioning. So when you see a sky filled with these white streaks, just know that it's not condensation. They're doing that on purpose, and we don't know what's in it. But like I said, it's probably filled with all kinds of harmful stuff and mind control gas to keep you sedated, to keep you weak, to keep you from fighting back because these evil powers are trying to keep humanity down. That seems to be their goal but it doesn't make sense from a human perspective because it's just, it's just too weird. So another thing that they have that really is mind-blowing is super soldiers. So the superheroes, I would say at least most of them, like you see in the Marvel movies or comics or DC comics or whatever, these actually exist. In fact, I met two of them and talked with them in depth. And I can tell you that as much as you may not want to believe that there are people that can shoot fireballs and people that can 
open up portals. I've met two people that can and talk with them and I knew that it was real and um, also suffered myself ill effects of one of these so-called superheroes attacking our friends and causing serious injury and loss and uh, they were, uh, they were uh, sent in this one case by the NSA I, I was able to find out so it's real these superheroes are real and while I'm on the topic of things that are in the movies that are real that you just can't believe I recently found out through the Jimmy Payne interviews that Actually, the xenomorph alien from the movie Alien and Aliens, the subsequent, you know, the alien with the elongated head, that's actually a real creature. And also the creature from The Predator with Arnold Schwarzenegger and also the subsequent movies, that was real as well. See Jimmy Payne on the Super Soldier Talk channel if you want to see more about that. And another mind-blowing revelation is that we have had interstellar travel spaceships that look like those big triangular ships from Star Wars like the Empire ships we've had them for a long time apparently since the 60s and for more on that read The Witness which is an excellent read by William Tompkins the late William Tompkins he passed away in 2016 that witness says that we have had this interstellar travel for quite some time. Actually, we have inter-universe travel and even interdimensional travel. Once again, you think that they can't keep a big secret like that from everyone, but they can, and they do, and I don't know what the ends of it are, but it's probably not what we think in terms of even the information that is available and again the question comes why are they keeping it secret now this brings me to the extraterrestrial thing because as you're looking into these conspiracies and crazy things that you start opening your mind to you have to look at that and that's a vast subject unto itself but I did my own investigation a eight-part series called Alien Abduction What Is It in 2016 and basically my conclusion was that these so-called benevolent aliens that are abducting people are not what they say they are and probably are extra dimensional rather than extraterrestrial however I don't know and uh, they are not necessarily our friends and they are not necessarily telling the truth in fact as I looked at it the there were three main investigators into this phenomena Bud Hopkins Dr. Carla Turner and Dr. David Jacobs and those three were the most credible because they when they spoke they made sense and their analysis especially Dr. David Jacobs analysis was very scientific uh, screening for possible errors or delusions that people might have with with testing and methodology to get past those issues to get the real facts behind what's happening and they all three concluded that the alien abduction phenomena is not benevolent the aliens are liars they use deception they use mind control including memory implantation memory erasure and also uh, during uh, sometimes very painful procedures they use mind control to to make the human think that what's going on is something very nice and pleasant and wonderful uh, as as and also they uh, with a painful memory they'll cover it over with a pleasant memory but then when they go into regression hypnotic regression they reveal that it was actually an extremely traumatic experience and there is uh, programs having to do with uh, interbreeding between humans and apparently some sort of non-humans whatever they might be um, this issue is actually in the Bible if you look at the whole issue of Noah and the flood it turns out that God was basically destroying the world because it had become corrupt 
with this non-human seed, basically either devils or demons or giants, Nephilim, which were the result of the interbreeding between angels and humans, but they made these evil giants and various other offspring that basically is a massive corruption to the original creation of man. And so this is a um, basically like an abomination. Uh, a, a, they're, they're dirty, they're evil. There are other witnesses that are sure that these beings are benevolent and they think that people like Bud Hopkins or Dr. David Jacobs are being too negative. Uh, but if you listen to what they say, it doesn't. They, they look at things with a, a, a lens that doesn't seem to make sense. Just the word abduction itself tells you that you're being taken without your choice. And all the other lies and things about, for instance, where they're from and various other things. Now, I don't know. I'm not going to say. I'm not going to be one of those people that say that I, I don't think that there are any extraterrestrials. However, um, cause, because I, I've all my, all my life, I've thought that there's, that there's a universe full of, of life. And for whatever reason, our governments hide it from us. But very recent information from an extremely credible source to, in fact, non-humans that I myself met, okay, angels, literal angels that match all the many descriptions that you hear about angels. I know that's hard to believe, but that is what in fact happened. You can see my witness. I'm not going to get into that too much here, except to say that both of them did not believe in extraterrestrials, and I grilled them on it. And this one angel in particular that I spoke with in depth has, has and, and had all of his memories from the beginning when humans, he said, were much larger, like giants. Not talking about the Nephilim, just that, that because um, there's also a record that Adam, from Adam and Eve, in the Garden of Eden, was actually much bigger than a normal man. And so people were much larger, even larger than that, before Adam and Eve, apparently. Um, but in any case, he had been witness through all his ages, and I described him. He didn't know what a cell phone was, so I had to explain to him. He thought it was sorcery. I had to explain to him that it was technology, because it could be actually sorcery mixed with technology, who knows. But in any case, so I explained to him, okay, I'm talking about aliens from other planets, extraterrestrials, okay, coming from other planets, beings from other planets. Do you understand what I'm saying? He said, yes. And he said, in all of his time, he had not seen it. Okay? And he said that outside what we call space was water. I don't know. Um, he said it wasn't the same as the water that, that we have here, but he said it was like water. And he, when I described the solar system, solar system to him, he said that it's not what we think it is. He said that the sun actually orbits the earth. The sun is still much larger than the earth, but the sun orbits the earth. And that that thing and, 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 and the moon obviously orbiting the earth, and that that orbits the tree of life, and that there's an agreement with the underworld to not tell man um, the truth because there's a, a, a holographic illusion around the world. There's like a shield or something around the earth and that ha contains a like a big screen and what, when we look out at the night sky or look out, look out at the sky, it's actually not the truth of what's out there. And uh, also another angel who I knew personally and I knew wasn't a liar uh, went traveling out into beyond the earth, whatever is out there, and she said that the sun is is not what she thought. It's, she said it was a device. So what got me blacklisted and what caused my gang stalking is from uploading these images that I'm going to show some of them here of these non-humans which I was able to discover when you slow down movies, even movies you can do of yourself, and catch what I call demonic distortion, which is the spirit bodies of these non-humans seems to be largely reptilian, but there are others that actually indwell our bodies and control our thoughts. And these spirits, believe it or not, are assigned various tasks of corruption or negative things, such as the scripture talks about the spirit of heaviness, there's actually a 
living being that can be in your body that causes depression. So no scientific study that is not open to the idea of spirits is ever going to discover what's causing depression in a lot of people. But of course there's all kinds of other demons, demons of sickness, demons of various other emotions, demons of confusion, demons of death, who knows what. But so many of them that it's beyond counting. In fact, by my video analysis, we can have literally thousands of these entities, anywhere from little tiny ones with these just these little faces to these great big ones that are much bigger than our actual body, and but and yet they still dwell in us. But the mouth is like this big. I caught on Harrison Ford like this mouth that was this big, and uh, he's actually a great uh, demonic distortion subject. Actually, the very best is uh, Harrison Ford, the actor Harrison Ford. Second best is Keanu Reeves, with my famous Keanu's Claw video, and uh, so this uh, this is what got me to be on the American blacklisting program, and the common word that is used for the tactics used against targets is gang stalking, but they also call it targeting or organized stalking, and this is done basically as a psychological warfare to destroy and minimize anyone who does anything that the powers that be don't like. So you may ask, what are these creatures? Aliens? Interdimensional invaders? Parasites? Well, yes and no, but basically I think that the word demon which actually is not a biblical word. Devils and evil spirits, the scripture calls them, is more accurate. These are not aliens from another planet. They're spirits from another dimension, a dimension that we can't see. They can see us, but we can't see them. And the more you look at it, the more the story of extraterrestrials, as far as the malevolent evil force coming against us just doesn't make as much sense as the biblical story. And I know a lot of people don't want to listen to anything the Bible has to say. In fact, if you mention anything out of the Bible, they go running. But to me, that's the explanation that makes sense. Because if they were extraterrestrials, then how come the friendly ones don't come and talk to regular people and, and try to get the word out? But there's only a few people that they'll talk with and associate, and those people tend to lose credibility the longer you listen to them. And so the whole thing begins to smell like something rotten in terms of the extraterrestrial story. And the more I looked at it, the more I looked at the alien witnesses, the more I felt that probably at least most of them are these evil beings known as demons, we know them more commonly as demons or devils, rather than aliens, extraterrestrials. However, I am not one of those people that close my mind because we simply don't know. And we have to keep our minds open. We don't know what's happening. We don't know what they are. They're not being forthcoming with us and telling us. And the few people that they do talk with, you know, the guy that took the pictures of the UFOs or some other people, Adamski or whatever, these various people, these various people that have had contact with extraterrestrials, they, like I said, are few and far between and they have some evidence, but it's like, why are they hiding it from the rest of humanity? If they have that great a technology, how come they can't do something that all of humanity can see and clear up the issue once and for all of whether there are extraterrestrials out there or not. Because there's all kinds of witnesses, but their evidence gets covered up and it's all very, you know, it's hard to really, you know, get something out there that's a for sure kind of situation. Now, it could be, my feeling has always been that it was to suppress that whole thing because they don't want people knowing about non humans because that would expose them. And it turns out these non-humans have an evil agenda. 
And so if you know about other non-humans that are benevolent, friendly, then that would expose them. But, as I said, the more I looked into it, the more it begins to sound like even the so-called friendly aliens, the good ones, mm, it's qu highly questionable that that's what they are. But then again, we don't know. So, I'm just saying that the people that come forward and tell the story about the friendly ETs, it's, it's hard to know. And the more I listen to it, the more I think about it, it just begins to lose credibility because again if they were that great and powerful and also you never hear them mention anything about elements that have to do with the Bible you say well that's because the Bible isn't true well but you don't hear them debunking it either okay you don't mention you don't hear about heaven you don't hear about hell you don't hear about God, you don't hear about Jesus Christ, um, at least from these extraterrestrials and their contactees. You may hear like a peripheral talking about it, but you don't hear any sort of discussion, real discussion about it. And I realized about the evil that we're experiencing that it's, it's hard to understand because how does God allow these extremely vicious evil acts and evil beings to continue on? and yet somehow that's all part of a design for some kind of experience in the world. It's, it's difficult for us to understand. We don't have a, a basis to compare. It's literally beyond our understanding. But it's if you look at what the scripture says, that's the important thing. And I have to tell you, I recommend it. Um, there are many people who say that the scripture is tainted and that it's not true, but the scripture itself tells us that it is true. People try to say that it's been mistranslated and parts have been taken out and other people cut stuff out and therefore it's not accurate. But I believe all of this is actually just minutia that is actually not relevant. If you can make a planet and everything on it, such as God's Word says, I think that you can get an accurate message to the people and God's Word says it clearly that His words are His and they are pure. And those, I believe, are the most clearly, uh, and, and by all arguments, the authorized King James Bible. So this whole thing to me is about learning, it's about having evil experiences, but it's also, for some, a test to see and for them to pass that test but it's about salvation or condemnation I for one have hope in salvation I for one have hope in eternal life free of pain sorrow and death as hers, as God's Word says and if you want to be saved it's not that hard you can just ask God will hear God will know your intent say a prayer about like this Father in heaven, please save my soul by the work of your son Jesus on the cross and show me your pure words in the authorized King James Bible.